wins Elijah Cummings' old seat. Gervonta Davis charged with battering his ex-girlfriend. And Monique calls out Oprah again. Today on the Diamond K Show. Welcome back. Welcome back uh, to the Diamond K Show here on RadioOnFire.com. Thank you for joining me. Uh, you know, so many things going on last night. We had uh, the president uh, spitting a whole bunch of lies uh, in front of uh, the Congress and uh, ultimately to the American people. But at the same token, we did see a bunch of um, uh, heartwarming moments as well as some not so professional moments. Uh, we saw a lot of things last night um, for the State of the Union. Always, um, you know, there's always going to be something when dealing with this president. Um, but as I said in the open, uh, Kwaisi and Fume, uh, I'm going to uh, reelect it um, because this is a seat that um, uh, the congressman uh, had in the past. Uh, ironically, he had the seat, the very seat that he was running for uh, at one time in his life, right? Uh, he was the, the, the holder of the seat before uh, before Elijah Cummings uh, actually uh, got the seat. But uh, last night, he was reelected in a landslide. Um, and this one, I, I was able to call this one pretty early. This comes down to one major thing, name recognition, okay? In a special election, most specifically in a special election, uh, older people are going to be the ones who turn out. What do I mean by turn out? Older people are going to be the ones who come out and vote, the older um, constituents, right? And when you have older constituents, they tend to vote for a familiar name, familiar face. Kwaisi is someone who is 71 years of age. He's been putting in the work. He's a name that uh, many of the folks know. And uh, the fact that he was um, reelected in a landslide is no surprise considering that this is a special election, as I said. And during a special election, the older people are going to come out. The younger people that are, are, are more on the progressive side that may be talking about Jill Carter and why uh, Jill Carter was not elected, those, those young people did not come out. They didn't come out and vote because, you know, it's not a presidential election. It's not voting for the mayor. They did not feel uh, the need to get out there and vote for whatever, whatever the reason was. They did not uh, come out in, as they say, in droves and vote. Now, people voted. There was there was a, a, a bigger turnout than I expected. I was talking to my mother about it. And I, I was ex was not expecting uh, the amount of people that came out. However, Kwaisi and Fume, as I said, being a name that people know, um, and that's how this happened. That's that's how we got here. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, there are some candidates on there who uh, I definitely would not have wanted to have seen uh, elected. And um, but but also to, to be fair, uh, there was a Republican. Um, that was a uh, uh, you know a finalist as I like to say uh, as well Kim Classic is that how you say her name Kim Classic uh, she on, on the Repu Republican side but uh, some of the the fifth place uh, Democrats received more votes than her so there's uh, there's no doubt that Kwaisi will wash the floor with Kim Classic and, and people people who who may not be familiar with Kim Classic Kim Classic um, is the Republican activist, she calls herself, who went with the camera crew to uh, uh, Catherine Pugh's house, if you remember that, and, and went to a camera crew with a camera crew to Elijah Cummings' house 
if you remember any of that foolishness, uh, she was the one who, you know, she had like a bullhorn or something like that. You know, she was she was she was the one that was outside of these folks houses uh, uh, acting crazy. Right. She was the one that um, filmed footage that that got some some kind of way to uh, Trump that um, caused him to talk about uh, Baltimore being rat infested, etc. She was the one that uh, posted these videos and tagged him in it and, and really uh, gave him ammunition to uh, disrespect Baltimore. Now, let, let, let's keep in mind that it, she didn't create stuff that wasn't there. Uh, she definitely is uh, uh, exploiting things that were already present, uh, but uh, she is the one nonetheless. Anyway, so she runs for uh, Elijah Cummings. Ironically, she runs for Elijah Cummings' old seat uh, vacated by his death, and um, she was the Republican winner, but this area tends to lead very uh, lean very very heavily on the democratic side so in that seat uh she can uh as they say kiss that goodbye she's not going to uh be the occupant of that seat and she should not okay let me say she she should not uh cute girl but um yeah so uh Kwasi and Fume getting reelected, and some people are not happy about it. Some people are not happy about it. Um, you know, this this is the stat quo. This is uh, you know, this is, and you can say anything that you want to say, but people did not come out and vote. Uh, these these people that are complaining did not come out and vote. This is the um, the traditional Baltimore, right? These these are the veterans, as I like to say. These are the legacy folk that came out and voted in droves for. Uh, Congressman Kwasi Nfume, even with all of his um, uh, baggage over the years. Um, but, I mean, uh, let, let's keep in mind, this country elected Trump with all his baggage. So baggage in 2020 is not something that people tend to become uh, uh, disenchanted by. Baggage don't mean nothing. You know, they they uh, the voters of 2020 are very happy with baggage, right? So uh, these people are not upset that he uh, dated a, a staffer, uh, misappropriated funds, or or, or or any of the things that, um, you know, were, were hanging in his closet. Kwasi and Fume, I'm talking about. Uh, they have essentially elected him, re-elected him back into uh, the Congress, and that's going to go down. But, of course, if you feel he's going he's gonna to finish out the term of um, Elijah Cummings. So if you feel like this was a mistake, if you feel like this isn't what you want to do, then maybe, maybe people need to come out and, uh, and, and vote at the appropriate time. <laughs> so... Otherwise, you cannot complain. I mean, you can complain, but it's like a kid complaining about something. Like, what are you? What are you talking about it for? Like, you had the opportunity. Him. You had that. the opportunity to do something, and you chose not to. Right. So you can't then sit and complain about folks. Uh, I was at his, um, yeah, announcement, and um. I'm going to say from from coming from the point where I saw him announce his candidacy to the point where he has now been victorious. Uh, I'm going to say that Kwaisi and Fume was probably surprised himself. I, I, I think that he was probably surprised himself at the fact that um, folks voted that he won. I, I, I think he was surprised. Uh, there was... Um, Oppressor, and that's where the media is asking the candidate questions. This is uh, away from everyone else. This is just a media thing and the candidate. And when he was taking on the barrage of questions about, um, you know, his deeds in the past or allegations or 
uh, different things like that. He seemed uncomfortable. He seemed uncomfortable, and he didn't know whether or not it was going to happen. But in this age of Trump, anything is possible. <laughs> anything is possible. Uh, so uh, congratulations are in order. Um, this is all but a formality. The Republican uh, Kim Classic is going to have the floor mopped with her um, going against Kwaisi and Fume. Uh, Kwaisi is going to be the one that represents the 7th District uh, of Maryland. So, so, so that that's what that's what it is. I mean, it's 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 people can can be upset. People can can feel whatever they want to feel. Uh, that is what it is. Um, so we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back and um, talk about the exploits of Javante Davis. <laughs> right after this, stay tuned. It's the Dami K Show. And we are back here on Radio on Fire. You man, Diamond K in here. Thank you for joining me. So on the other side, I was talking about Kwaisi and Fume and him getting back his, you know, his old gig, so to speak. Um, another person who, I mean, guidance is so important. Guidance, uh, proper management. People steering you in the right direction, so important, especially for young people. But, I mean, older people need guidance as well, right? So you have a boxer from Baltimore, champion, someone who rose from literally nothing to the heights in boxing, right? He is someone who is surrounded by the Floyd Mayweather, the money team, right? Somebody that has rubbed arms with the upper echelon of boxing, right? Nothing but a bright future ahead of him. But as many times is the case with young people uh, without guidance, risking it all. And, and when I say risking it all, I don't want, I want, I'm not overstating this, okay? Everyone saw the video by now of Javante Davis snatching up. His uh, ex-girlfriend, the mother of his children. Everybody has seen that by now. And in that video, which is very disturbing, very disturbing, uh, any, anybody that, that may have not caught it, he grabs, grabs the, the girl up by her neck, right? This is in a public place, right? He's in a, a room full of people, right? So, so some quick... Quick on their feet, person grabbed this cell phone footage, and I am so glad that they did. Grab some cell phone footage of uh, Javante, a.k.a. Tank Davis, uh, grabbing up the mother of his children, grabbing her up by the neck, and, you know, leading her out of the building. So we see this happen. And, you know, many people outraged by it. I saw it uh, over the weekend as everybody else did. And, you know, I instantly felt like, look, who's going to want to do business with him? This is going to affect them. Are they going to strip him of a title? Like, what, what's going to happen? All right. This is a Super Bowl weekend. So she's, she's in Miami. He's in Miami. There's some, some uh, scary guy sitting beside him. And when I say scary, I mean, maybe I should say scared guy. I didn't mean scary, like, ooh, he's scary, but just a scared guy beside her, whatever. Speculations, we can speculate what we want, whether they were out on a date or whether Javante assumed that they were on a date or uh, whether it was no date at all, but he just didn't want her in the place or whatever, where are my kids, whatever he was thinking. Doesn't matter. The light heavyweight championship boxer, had to turn himself in yesterday after this cell phone video surfaced. And I'm sure that she wasn't the one that, uh, you know, pressed charges, as they like to say. She probably was the one, but it didn't even matter. She didn't have to be because everybody saw the video. 
Uh, and, and this is a physical altercation. So he can say in his response to the video that he never would hurt her or hit her or anything like that. This was assault. You already assaulted her. I mean, he's a boxer, so maybe he just thinks that the only way you can assault is by him using his hands but yoking her up like he did by the throat is assault. He wouldn't want that to happen to his daughter. Come on, let's be serious, right? So he's been charged with simple battery, domestic violence, and um, processed. Uh, this was a charity basketball game on Saturday. Um, and uh, as I said, this was the Super Bowl. So uh, maybe she did something that he did not like. Whatever it was, we don't know. But as I said, thankfully, uh, somebody grabbed that video footage. Now, um, one thing that I am happy about the women, when, when there's been issues with other uh, celebrities in the past, I think that some of them have tend, sometimes there's a small group of people that tend to defend uh, the guy and say, you don't know what the woman did to him. And, you know, whether it's an elevator, or whether it's a car that they're in, whenever the assault happens, something, T uh, a women, so a small group of people tend to defend the person. Nobody can defend uh, Javante Davis. I think that everybody is in unison with the fact that this was wrong. So simple battery is not something that's going to land him in jail for the rest of his life or anything like that, nor uh, should it. But uh, this is definitely going to be a wake-up call, and I think that this is going to ultimately be something to hang over him. Uh, this is not something that, that is easily shaken. Uh, the cloud of abuse. Uh, what is his temper like? What happens? At, and I said this many times. If he did this in front of everybody at this charity game, and, and yes, the, the the whole world was not wa watching that charity game, and the I mean result of this social media era is that at any point in time a viral moment can happen and then everybody's watching that viral moment um, and that definitely has become a a viral thing and it is um, it's sad because if if things all come crashing down if Javante Davis loses it all because of these type of actions and, and let's hope that there are no other actions. What if there are other times where he's lost his cool and other people have grabbed footage of that and this makes them bring that out? That could happen as well and, and things could. Or this could be a one-time thing and I'm, being, I'm trying to be on the positive side. This could be a one-time thing and that's it and there's nothing else. I hope that that's the case. He's young. I hope that he gets it together and realizes uh, the seriousness and the severity of these actions that... Um, that he is partaking in. I hope that he sees that because I like Javante and I am rooting for him. Uh, the, the, what he's done thus far has been monumental, monumental, great for the city of Baltimore and just great for young people around the country. But, you know, uh, a hero can become a, uh, uh, just nothing. Uh, I think that Brother Muhammad would say a hero becoming a zero. Like he can, he could easily turn this around, and this can easily go the wrong way, um, just like that. So uh, definitely, we're going to keep following this story. Javante Davis turning himself in simple battery is the charge, and we're going to see how things go forward from there. He's been processed and all of that, so we're going to uh, keep. You know, keep you abreast on that. Let's take a quick break, and we're going to come back after this. Um, Monique, she's uh, you know, she's she's got a special coming up, so she's trying to sell that. But she has words for uh, Oprah Winfrey, and also Jay Z has responded to some things. So we're going to come back and talk about that uh, after this quick break. Diamond K Show. Stay tuned. I, I like Monique, and I and I try not to, um, uh, I, I try not to have any issues uh, with.
people from Baltimore when I, when I can. But uh, just like Tank Davis, uh, if they do something wrong, I gotta I gotta call it out. You know what I mean? I can't just sit on my hands about it. Uh, and, and Monique is just. Monique is one of those women, uh, just one of those people, that um, she's uh, she's controversial, and and I th- I say that she's controversial because she has a certain way of looking at things, what is her standing, how people should treat her, and the effect of her actions, her own actions, and sometimes some people just don't have a good handle on any of that. And that strikes me as who Monique is. Monique, the comedian I'm talking about. So uh, she very famously has had some issues with Netflix about her comedy special. But uh, it's it's, it's deeper than the comedy special. Because if you go back and talk about Monique dealing with her issues with Oprah Winfrey with Tyler Perry, with Lee Daniels, uh, in regards to Precious. Uh, She has one way that she looks at this thing, and everybody else may have another way, unless you're her husband, and then you look at it exactly the way she looks at it. But everybody everybody has a different way of looking at it. Um, So for quite some time, Oprah has been on the Monique uh, crap list, right? Well, we've already known that. Uh, She infamously told Monique um, to, uh, you know what I mean, uh, you know, kiss her with a sun do shine, so to speak. Uh, she, 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 she said a lot of things about Oprah, but she also landed, and this is Monique I'm talking about, landed a comedy special with Showtime. So Showtime is going to show, Showtime's going to show, <laughs> see that uh, anyway showtime is going to premiere a monique comedy special uh on friday and what should be happening now is monique should be promoting this comedy special but no that's not what's happening or 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 maybe it is maybe it is because she she decides that what she needs to do is call out Oprah in this uh, open letter. So she calls out Oprah Winfrey in this open letter. And here's the thing about this letter. Okay. A lot of things that Oprah has done are are not uh, defendable positions, right? I'm not going to sit here and defend Oprah Winfrey. A lot of things that Monique said about Oprah are true. But to me, at a certain point, it's like, what are you saying it for? Let's move forward. Let's focus on Monique. Let's focus on Monique being successful instead of uh, uh, talking about the past as far as Lee Daniels and and, uh, and Oprah and Tyler Perry. But it seems like we are back here again. So she posted this on IG. And Monique spoke about Oprah producing the, the Me Too documentary on Russell Simmons. And I've said that. I don't agree with that. I don't like how that whole thing has gone down. Uh, And I said that at the film festival, this, this, she, she claimed Oprah claimed that she was pulling out of this project, um, this documentary about a Russell, Russell Simmons accuser pulling out of this documentary because they wanted to show the movie too fast, right? They wanted to prevent, but here's the thing. She was, she has to deal with Apple, Oprah, and she was trying to set it up. So this, project could be part of her deal with apple and the producers of the movie the directors or whatever they they wanted to go to a film festival which what happens at the film festival is tv networks have the opportunity to buy a project and apple was offended because they wanted to have the first right of refusal but if this goes to a film festival then other people want to bid on it and they potentially could lose so they were offended and they put pressure on Oprah. It wasn't Russell Simmons' pressure. Oprah buckled under the pressure of Apple. Now, when Oprah backed out of that, that was because Apple was offended. And it was like, yo, you better talk to your mans and them. That They better not put this at the film festival. Anyway, they put it at the film festival. HBO has purchased this. And HBO is going to 
premiere this Russell Simmons documentary. So that's what that's what happens with that. Now, let's get back to 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 Monique and this letter. Now, Monique says in the letter to Oprah, you also said if we make this all about about Harvey Weinstein, then we have lost the moment and continued on to say when you either are or we're going to be part or we're going to be part of the documentary on Michael Jackson and Russell Simmons. How's that not making it all about them? Um, so she's making that contrast. And this is a lot of times people have done this, made the contrast that she's very soft on Harvey Weinstein. They've done a lot of business together and uh, hard on Michael Jackson, who was acquitted in his life while he was alive. And, uh, Russell Simmons, uh, who hasn't been charged with anything. So it's just, um, you know, and that's, and that's, those are valid points. I don't disagree with any of that. Now, Monique then got into her issues with Oprah saying, you've watched me as a black woman be accused of being difficult for not promoting precious internationally for Lionsgate uh, at Lionsgate, Tyler Perry and your request, uh, at Tyler at Lionsgate's Tyler Perry and your request. So they, Lionsgate and Tyler Perry and Oprah asked her to promote this. She did not, despite the fact that my deal was with Lee Daniels. Uh, so Lee Daniels, uh, Lee Daniels Entertainment. So Lee Daniels got them to try to put pressure on on Monique to do this. She did not. They said that she was difficult. She seems like she's difficult, though. But that doesn't mean you can't do business with her. But whatever. Um, how are you? For black women, when you hear Tyler on audio saying that I was right and he was going to speak up, but you or him still haven't said a word. She continued on to say when she met Oprah at 16, she told Oprah that she wanted to be just like her. And Oprah's reply being, you have to work really hard. Uh, Monique said, my 16 year old self did not know that you and your silence in the face of wrongdoing would make my life harder. All right, so uh, she's definitely still harboring uh, feelings of being wronged. And I'm going to say that Oprah could have helped Monique, but Monique's got to help Monique too. And the way that Monique can help Monique is by moving forward and leaving this whole thing in the past and just being successful and not not even worrying about this anymore this is this is not going to work itself out or maybe it is going to work itself out but i don't think that she needs to seek to try to um she just needs to move forward and and, and i'm glad that she has this this outlet with showtime i hope that it's successful i hope that it's funny i am going to watch it and i hope that it's good i hope that it's good uh so she has that coming as i said it's coming on showtime this friday and uh you know if it's not funny then then that's something else but we'll see what happens with that uh so la last thing before i get out of here uh there was flack for jay-z and beyonce and blue ivy not standing during the national anthem even though the president did all kind of craziness during the national anthem at the super bowl but anyway uh that aside there were other people that in the room that were not standing up but for some reason uh, people are pointing out Jay-Z and Beyonce and Blue Ivy like they have no other vision of anything else in the room. Uh, but uh, according to Jay-Z, he was analyzing the national anthem performance, he, uh, this statement. Um, and did, he, did Beyonce need to analyze it? And uh, well, I guess he's speaking for himself. He's not speaking for... Uh, anybody else very interesting that jay-z says that uh, I was, he was not protesting so be, be clear uh he was just analyzing some things so that they there you go with that um uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section instagram facebook twitter at the diamond k show at radio on fire of course you want to advertise on the diamond k show you can do that uh, by going to radio on fire.com slash promo uh, and also, if you miss any episodes of the show, it's always available on YouTube slash DJ Diamond K or YouTube slash Radio on Fire. And uh, so I'll be I'll be back 7 p.m. See you guys.